Uh, if, if rates rise, we have a problem. And the problem is, is that all of the asset classes are inversely correlated to the rise in rates. Uh, we wanted to get an update from you on what you're looking and watching uh on the retail precious metals availability because it has been extremely disorienting. You've been warning us, I know, for years, but it's been disorienting in the last month especially to have to tell every single caller that uh, there are no sovereign minted silver coins available in immediate stock and it'll be weeks until, and that a number of uh, the shipments from the mints themselves that we're committed to come in sometimes get delayed. So uh, we're all having to kind of play, you know, adapt and plan B and that sort of thing. Uh, what are you seeing now? Is that trend continuing, accelerating, abating uh, about availability of physical silver for investment purposes? You know, one of the things that I, I was thinking about on the airplane the other day was, and I'm a little remiss about this, is that, you know, sometimes I, I'm not exactly clear in the way that I say things. Um, a curse that I have is that I see things, at least in this industry, and it's not because I'm smart. It's because I've been around the block. I've done this for 32 years and I've seen things that have happened and trends that happen. And um, one of the things that lead me to say the things I have over the last year and a half done again about supply or the um, dwindling supply is, and here's where I haven't been clear enough. When I say that, I see it happening in terms of trajectory. I see how much harder it is to get product. I see delivery delays. I see supply chain distortions. I see all sorts of things that I've never seen before, at least not as quite as severe as they are right now. But what I should have always thrown into the mix, and I guess maybe I haven't done that or articulated it as well, is that I also believe where we are heading will come with a mass awakening. When the awakening happens, when more and more people realize that the Fed is backed into a corner, that we are trapped, that that if, if rates rise, that the Fed keeps saying we're going to raise rates because we, you know, inflation got out of control. And, and uh, if, if rates rise, we have a problem. And the problem is, is that all of the asset classes are inversely correlated to the rise in rates. And so I guess the point is, is that Yes, it's getting harder to find. Yes, there's been product available, even though it's more difficult. And as you said, maybe comes with the delivery delay and premiums on the rise again. But if we see an awakening, which I think we will, I find it impossible to believe that we won't have that seminal moment. And, you know, I guess the frustration for most of us is, well, where's that seminal moment been? You have inflation, you have war, you have, you know, a, a horrible approval rating with the current administration, you have geopolitical problems, you, you have all of these things that were, were gold and silver should be flourishing. And of course, we talked ad nauseum about the manipulation of the market, uh, the fact that gold and silver are the canary in the mine shaft that we want to, they want to keep the price down so as to not expose the frailty of the of the dollar and of the system. But at some point, at some point, as we continue to either debase and destroy the dollar or as rates rise or uh, and that's rates rise by the Fed and they'll never raise them enough to where at least we're, we're no longer in negative real rate territory. But as we've talked about before, you know, the the, the trend that we're seeing to move away from the dollar, the weaponizing of the dollar, pushing the Russians into the open arms of the Chinese, seeing Nigeria strike a deal with Saudi Arabia, or excuse me, with China rather, to, to sell their oil for Yuan, to see Saudi Arabia in negotiations with China to sell, to purchase uh, uh, or sell their oil for Yuan. And remember, those yuan bonds that China sells are immediately convertible into gold on the Shanghai exchange. But the trend that I see is moving away from the dollar. And when you see more and more inflation coupled with less and less demand for the dollar, there is going to be that moment where rates rise. And, you know, we keep talking about the Great Reset and the perfect storm. But in that event where the dollar falls because people are dumping it, uh, that means you see rates rise. Uh, rates rise, and when rates rise, all of the pillars of wealth in the, in the country collapse. Somewhere between now and that point, there will be an awakening. And I'll tell you this, that there's not a lot of metal out there. There just isn't enough out there to suffice a mass awakening. And so I've always said to you, I believe the market will be defined 
by the inability to source product readily. And yes, for the naysayers out there, we've been able to source it. We're also very high on the food chain. If you talk to your local coin shop, chances are they'll tell you they have virtually nothing. Uh, their premium is very, very, very high because they have no other choice. In order to attract metal to buy, they have to pay a high premium and sell it for a higher premium. But the same thing is happening in this industry right now. And if you're not willing to, to pay top dollar for product and buy it well in advance um, and hedge it, you're out in the cold. So what do I see? I see more of the same. Premiums across the board continue every single week to rise. Every single week, they continue to rise. $14 uh, over spot on Silver Eagles, uh, seven plus dollars over spot on, on junk silver. And I think that we're gonna start to really see it in gold as well. You know, right now, a lot of the dealers who own gold, um, it's been sitting on their shelves because the majority of all the sales that the industry has been doing has been for the last two years in silver uh, because of the great value that it offers, because of the disparity between the ratio, the historical disparity between the fact that it's coming out of the ground 11 times under what it's priced at, seven to one out of the ground, 77 to one or thereabouts uh, uh, ratio, real ratio, so price wise. So, the demand has been in silver, so the dealers who hold gold, it's something called the cost of carry. It sits on their shelf earning dust. And so that costs money instead of putting it in silver uh, Britannias or kilo bars or whatever it is that continues to, to attract a demand. We'll see the same thing in gold too, especially if we see that seminal moment, if we, if we see that moment that I've always seen in the back of my mind that it's coming. Um, where people wake up, you know, I, I live in a community <clears throat> and I'm, I'm sorry to kind of get off track, but it's all in the same point here. <clears throat> we, I live in a community with a lot of very successful people and 98% and of them, 99% here, wouldn't know a gold coin if it fell on their foot. I live across the street from the largest money manager in Southern Florida, wouldn't know a gold coin if it fell on his foot. So we're a long way from that seminal moment by the public, or are we? Um, because ask yourself this question, where is it that you will put your money that offers a modicum of safety and any return at all? You know, the argument against buying gold and silver is that it doesn't pay a return, but it sure beats the snot out of a negative real return on anything in fixed income land. And, you know, equities at all time highs, real estate at all time highs, all of them inversely correlated to that rise in interest rates. And, and the fact that you have uh, you know, this Politburo uh, or, or this group at the Fed who's controlling interest rates will end badly. Interest rates have to be controlled by the market, not by bankers. And at some point, rates are going to rise to be commensurate with the depreciation of the dollar. And when that happens, there will be an awakening. And at that moment, everyone will understand what I mean about not being able to find product because it's hard to find product now for, for the small group of us hard asset people who get it, but when everyone else who's, who, who, who there's so much money out there and, and when people realize that if they don't make a move immediately, that they're in jeopardy of, of, of being clobbered as rates rise in traditional assets, that's when it happens. And the progression I've seen only makes me feel that this is a continuing thing because it's getting harder and harder and harder and harder to source product. You can see it. People out there who look at online companies can see it. The local coin shops will see it. And in my mind, at some point, maybe even this year, um, we'll all see it. And so, yes, there's product available right now, maybe at the highest premiums I've seen in my career uh, across the board, um, which is indicative of tightness in supply. And so whether it is a, a lack of production by the mints. Some people think that there's plenty of silver, which I don't, mind you, but some people do and just think that it's a refining problem or a, a lack of blanks. Like, for example, the U.S. Mint can't get blanks right now because by law, they're not allowed to pay above the average world price of silver, right? And so no one wants to sell them blanks at spot. So they're not able to go into the open market and say, fine, we'll pay a buck over that. No, you have to go to the to the Treasury Secretary and have them, you know, acquiesce, and, and that's not going to happen. So the reason the Mint can't get silver to make Silver Eagles is no one wants to sell it at this make-believe price. And so anyways, in a very roundabout way, 
uh, in a long-winded answer. Um, more of the same and continuing to get worse because whether it's a lack of refined product or a, or a shortness of supply, it, both roads lead to the same place because as it is right now, the demand is greatly outpacing what supply the market is able to, to uh, present to the public. So despite the uh, critical shortages in availability of, uh, at least inability to meet the demand for investment, uh, sovereign minted silver coins, there are some bar products which usually just stay in the background. It's only for hardcore people that are, you know, stacking and, and most people don't even uh, necessarily give them that much of a thought, but they've emerged as one of the things that still can be available. Uh, in fact, I think you've got some uh, that are coming in next week. I understand that you're offering at a special price. Yeah, we have um, we have a special relationship with the Royal Canadian Mint. We've worked very closely with them for over a decade now with our vaults in Montreal, Toronto, and Vancouver. Um, and as a result, we were able to source a, a nice supply of um, Royal Canadian Mint brand new, fresh, 100-ounce silver bars at $4.45 an ounce, any quantity, over the price of silver. And those will be live in stock on Tuesday. We have confirmation that they're already on the truck and heading our way. Um, so, look, for the last six months, personally, I've been buying kilo bars and 100-ounce bars because the premiums we're seeing on the coins uh, are, are just getting to the point of being absurd. And um, um, I don't know. I, there's something about the brand-new 100-ounce RCM bars and the Valcambi kilos. And we do have a good number of those in stock also right now. Um, but they're both amazing. And I think they're a very nice strike and balance between utility and price. Yeah, if I had my druthers, I'd have nothing but one ounce sovereign mint coins, but paying big premiums and waiting four weeks to get them is just not something I, I, I want to do personally. And I have a hard time getting behind telling people to do the same thing. Just a set level setting of expectations with people on delivery timelines. Normally, if people pay with bank wire, which we encourage, we can ship within two to three business days is typical. In this case, uh, sounds like those uh, metals will be coming in in about uh, four business days from now. So uh, that, that'll put a little bit of a damper on that timeline, but pretty close uh, to what we could normally perform. Yeah, I mean, it, look, I get it. When people send off a lot of money, they want to know where their product is. I get it. Um, we're doing the very best we can. We really are. And, and um, demand is up, no question about it, and a lot of activity going on in the shipping department. But these we can expect to turn around promptly and uh, have every intention, certainly, of doing so.